So welcome back to obviously Fight Talk and we're going to look ahead to UFC Fight Night 121. Where is it? It's in Sydney, Australia, mate. <laughs> um, my famous That's lions terrible. are going to get ready for all the uh, Nalo Key famous lions. Of They may not be household names, but these are the young, hungry yeah. fighters. So this is like, I think it's I'm... It's not a great card. It's not a great it's card. Not, let's be honest with ourselves, come on. It's not great. It's not great. <laughs> but look, we're, we're gonna we're gonna look ahead because yeah. if not, you're only looking back, and you know, always look forward. I'm not Marty McFly. Um, so UFC Fight Night 121. Uh, uh, opening the main card, we're gonna look at the main card. We've got Alexander the Great Volkanovski taking on Sugar Shane Young. Shane Young making his debut on the promotion. Volkanovski has had two UFC bouts yeah. and has t- has had two wins, both against Japanese fighters. That's got to be. Um, it's a bit of a weird one, that. <laughs> Your yeah, two fights one, are against yeah. Japanese. But uh, Volkanovski is the more experienced and he's currently win- uh, on a 12-fight win streak. Um, so, Rob, what's your initial thoughts on this one? Young Shane Young, Australian guy, making his debut in Australia on UFC. Stuff of dreams. Stuff of dreams. Um, Volkanovski, I was pretty impressed with his last couple of outings. He's a pretty good kickboxer, good fighter um, all around. Um, I think he's a bit of a prospect in the division i'm not sure about uh about young to be honest i haven't seen much of him yeah. looked him up on youtube he fights a lot in china so there's not too much footage on him yeah he's um, been on brave as well yeah, yeah he's been on brave it uh, looks like a decent fighter just again there's not too much to break down there i just feel, think volkanovsky um is a good kickboxer and i think he's going to get it done and um, but again i don't know too much about shane young but looking at shane young's record as you said like we're just doing a little bit of research going into this and like you can see he he He's what you discuss. This sounds again. He's he's a mixed martial artist. He has yeah, victories yeah. by decision. He has submissions and he has he has uh, knockouts. Again, when you look down Volkanovski, there's a lot more uh, TKO finishes and knockouts. He does have the odd submission. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Volkanovski. The kickboxing. He's he's on a crazy win streak. He's had that taste of the UFC canvas and the octagon. So the old octagon and jitters. He, he has looked really really impressive. He has looked really really good in his last couple of fights. Um, so. You know, you, you have to go with the guy that you've seen more, really. Um, the guy who looks more impressive on paper when you haven't seen the guy, other guy too much. So, yeah, I'm going to go Volkanovski as well. It'd probably be a decision, but um, he has knockout power. His first one against uh, Kasuya was beautiful. That finish was lovely. So, I'll go. I'm going with Volkanovski. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd okay. like to see, you yeah, again, like um, Shane Young, only a big, young up-and-coming yeah. fighter. But, um, big test. you know, the test of, of the octagon is, is real and jitters are real. Moving up the card, you've got the goat, the best hair in MMA. I'd say one of the yeah one one of the guys with the best hair in MMA. I think so. Yeah, taking on one of the men with the worst knees in MMA. <laughs> Probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way. They, that's the way they should build this. Yeah yeah. Hair versus knees. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on the Spartan Ilias Theodoro? Are you happy with Elias, that? Elias. 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 Yeah, damn. Yeah. Uh, against Daniel Kelly. Uh, Daniel Kelly, of course, was um, he's the most. Awkward looking man in the cage, <laughs> uh, but he was going on a bit of a tear for a while. Like he'd beaten uh, Chris Camozzi and Rashad Evans, and then yeah. Derek Brunson absolutely blitzed him in his last outing. But what's your thoughts here? Can Dodgy Knees take on the Golden Hair? I think you have to lean towards uh, Teodoro just for the simple fact of he's the younger guy, the more athletic guy. And Dan Kelly has beat that before. He's mm-hmm. certainly beat that before. But I think with Teodoro, he's kind of good everywhere. He's a good, decent striker. He has good takedowns. He's hard to take down. Uh, Dan Kelly, you know, he's one of them guys who came from a really traditional background. He and came from that, go, that, yeah. Yeah, that judo background. And you know what his game plan is? It's going to be jab into the clinch and try to get him down. Teodoro's a big, big man for that division. Mm. Um, Dan Kelly's pretty undersized. I think it's going to be difficult for Kelly to get him to the floor. And even if he does, Teodoro, he's, he's pretty good at getting back to his feet. Um, and not getting submitted so I think it's a difficult fight for Dan Kelly you know so, some of the other guys Dan Kelly bit, beat were kind of Asian fighters they were great fighters in their own right but they were Asian fighters whereas Teodoro was a guy who's coming up um, I wouldn't say he's the best most polished fighter in the division um, I think his last loss was to Tavares um, but again he's always competitive in fights I just think Dan Kelly is too specialised I think he's going to be looking for that takedown he's not going to be able to get it Teodoro is really rangy big big mm, guy yeah, yeah. can use his uh, his teep kicks his jab to, to stay away so I'm going to go with Teodoro to win um, I'm going to say it's a de- decision as well um, I think it might be one of them fights where it's just Kelly looking for the takedown and Teodoro chopping at his legs, chopping at his body, landing jabs and staying away at range. So Teodoro for being the younger guy, I'm gonna go with Teodoro. I agree. When I when you look at Kelly fight, 
you know, he was showing good striking in some ways. He was yeah. landing a really awkward. It was like it was like uh, last week when we interviewed Dylan Tuka Bama and he said I threw the most unstylistic yeah, yeah. right and it worked. And he said, Jesus, being a Mongo works. Yeah. And Dan Kelly, no disrespect to Dan Kelly, he's a UFC fighter, but he doesn't have the most crisp technique, yeah. let's say. Um so it could be frustrating if he can't get it to ground. But one of them wild flailing shots could land. I don't think it will. I agree with you, Rob. I'm going with Theodoro to look golden and majestic in there and get the victory. And again I agree. I think we'll go to the scorecards. Um moving up the card then we've got the Celtic or Celtic kid. We'll go with the Celtic kid. Celtic kid. We'll go uh, Jake Matthews taking on Bojan Velelikov <laughs> <laughs> Made a mess of that one. Close. Bojan. No. Go Bojan. Now, Bojan Vilikovic. Yeah. Vilikovic. Yeah. That's what we're going with. Thoughts on this one, Rob. Uh, Vilikovic coming off uh, a loss. And uh, Matthews two. coming off two losses. So, um, again, as you just mentioned there, Kevin Lee was one of the losses and Andrew Holbrook was the yeah. other for Matthews. But uh, Bojan lost to the uh, new... UK and British yeah. star Darren Till uh, unanimous decision though he stayed in there for three rounds yeah it's a weird one because Darren Till if you look at his career before getting to Donald Cerrone mm. people were talking about him going in against not these a finisher guys. yeah going in against these guys who we probably should have beaten Handley and staying in there um, and I think Till mentioned that he was you know I don't know if he mentioned he was just letting them stay in there but I think he was trying to get time in the cage he was trying out a few things he wasn't really as aggressive as he probably could have been I'm not sure about um, Bojan's fight with Till if that's the case um, but I thought he looked okay in the fight mm. um, he's a he's a pretty big guy I think he's going to be bigger than Matthews because Matthews is coming up to welterweight for the first time mm. um, coming up from lightweight um, Matthews again he was a pretty good prospect over the years um, but he ran into some good guys he lost a couple of fights very mm. explosive guy though so I think if he's to get it done here he's, he's going to have to use the explosiveness he's going to have to land get in and out Um I don't know, I'm leaning toward Bojan. I'm leaning toward Bojan to just get it done. I think he's technically better. I think his striking is just slightly technically better. I think um, his um, precision is precise. Basically, yeah. I think he's just going to be able to land the better shots. Whereas yeah. Matthew sometimes he throws these big looping punches, tries to get in and out, um, which can work, I think. But in this one, I just think it's going to be again another decision. I think it's going to be a bar, not a boring decision, Ooh. but I think it's going to go to the to the um, decision. But if it does finish. I'm going to go with Matthews to get a finish um, early Ooh. on something big, but I'm going to go with Bojan. Like, I think, like, as in Bojan, I think he, he hung in there with Darren Till. Darren Till, we've seen what he done to Cowboy. So I'm going to flip that script and say, look what a fella who went the distance with uh, Bojan done to a lightweight who's fighting at Welter. So flip it back. Can Bojan do the same to Jake Matthews? Yeah. Again, it's a lightweight coming up. I think size could be the difference here. And I'm going to go one. I'm gonna go with a finish, uh, but I'm going to go with Bojan to get the yeah. finish um, and get him out of there probably late round one. Yeah. Size him up, use his size, use his strength, and um, yeah, get the finish. Uh, TKO yeah. for Bojan. Uh, the next one is a good fight as well. Two great nicknames as well. The Dirty Board. Tim Means taking on... I can never remember this fella's name. Remember it. See what I done there. Remember the name, Bell Hal Mohammed. What's your thoughts on this one, Rob? Uh, this is probably the best matched fight on the card, I think. Um, Tim Means, I've, I've always been a big fan of Tim Means, the way he fights. He reminds me of a Matt Brown who just fought a couple Ooh. of days ago. Um, uses elbows lovely, mm. knees lovely. Um, can probably be broken at sometimes. He's a tough guy, but sometimes he, for, for the, the really good guys will break him. But... Tim Means is very good everywhere. He's a decent guard. Good takedown defense. Mm. Um, Muhammad, I think the first time I seen Muhammad, I thought he fought a lot like Michael Bisping. Not huge power in his hands, but very consistent. Good gas tank and will stay in there. Um, so I think it's going to be a case in this one. For me, it's going to be the guy who can land the better shots and the, the more damaging shots. And for me, I think that's Tim Means. I think he's going to be able to get on the inside with his elbows. Um, and his knees and he's good in the clinch as well I think Mohammed sometimes um, can sl start very slowly mm. um, and he can try like he'll start very slowly but he get into the fight and he'll be able to win it over rounds but I think Tim Means will be able to land the better shots that's why I'm going to go with Tim Means but I think this is probably the best match fight on the card yeah, I, yeah I, I like this this one jumps out for me as well on the card um, I, I think I like your comparison with Matt Brown with uh, Tim Means and I just think he's that sort of 
you know, Bell Hammond, uh, no, but uh, Mohammed is is a fighter. You know what I mean? And he likes he likes the competition, the sport. And I don't mean that like as in he can't rough it. He has. You've seen him getting bloodied up. He bloodied up. But Tim good, Means good technical loves striker. a fight. Yeah, he loves a fight. He'll get you in there. Yeah, he'll get a brawl. He love face, a fight, yeah. and he, he can break. And I know you you said he's broke, but I, to, for me, like uh, Mohammed, when he's come up against a guy that level above like I, I want to say like Alan Joban yeah. he lost unanimous decision he, he against he Vincent Luke, okay. he got yeah he got uh, he got done done and won yeah. um, and the then when he's a good win though that's a great win yeah Jordan it is a good Mane win and Randy Brown's a good win but I just think I just think there's levels we always talk about levels in MMA and yeah. I just think Tim Means his record you know it's, he's one of these 27 and 8 and 1 like, so his record doesn't Matt Brownie it's yeah. kind of Matt Brownie yeah so I just At think times. I think Tim Means but just by being the harder nosed fighter here so and too. sort of grind it out and probably go to decision and it might get dirty um, and it might be bloodied up but I just see uh, Tim Means probably getting yeah. Joe Martinez to say his name yeah I think uh, I, I kind of follow on from what I was saying the way uh, Muhammad starts pretty slowly it's not really good to do against Means because if you let Means get into a groove and get comfortable that's when he's the best so yeah uh, your comment event sees Beck Rollins taking on Jesse Rose Clark we will be familiar with Rowdy Beck Rollins yeah. but we are seeing a new um, fighter in Jesse Rose Clark here yeah. coming in on short notice because Joanne Calderwood fell out of the fight that was a great fight um, so yeah uh, what's your thoughts Rob coming into this one um, again not too much uh, tape on Rose Clark mm. um, I went looking for some she fought in Invicta I watched that fight uh, she fought in Titan I believe I found a little small clip of that and she seems like a kind of a wrestle boxer mm. old school wrestle boxer type um, the problem with picking her in this one and why I'm leaning towards Beck Rollins is of course the experience there in the UFC is a big one um, you know stepping in on short notice is going to be tough mm. and Beck Rollins is you know she's not the best fighter in that division but she's good and she's she's tough um, but I think the problem is the way Beck Rollins will throw a lot of combinations she's aggressive she'll come forward where um, Clark sometimes she'll throw one shot she has, a, she has a very good jab but she'll just throw the jab and that's pretty much it or a low kick or something and I just think she doesn't really land as many combinations um, her takedown down defense is okay but she's not really great on the floor whereas Beck Rollins is pretty good on the floor great ground and pound if you watch some of our fights even against the like, I'm losing names now but the likes of uh, in, in Invicta and when she got to the floor, she's vicious with her ground and pound. Mm. And she gets a mount. She land the elbow. She land punches. So I'm gonna go with Beck Rollins for the experience and just the aggressiveness. What's interesting about this fight is Rollins is coming up from strawway yeah. to flyway, and Clark is going from bantam yeah. to flyway. So one's cutting more and one's yeah. adding more. So it's interesting to see how Clark makes the cut to be making the cut like I think if looking at topology if I scroll down I think she's made the cut to fly away before she has uh, back in 2015 but yeah. all her fights since have been at Bantam, bantam. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how she doesn't, looks yeah. making the cut she doesn't look like a huge Bantam weight no, though, so. no. And, and I have to say when I seen her I was looking I was reading the article and I seen a picture of her and like she looks like I know it sounds stupid like looking I know, at a picture said this before, but yeah. she looks ripped she looks like she's you know yeah. what I mean you go She's a fighter. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot on her. So, but I think the, the cutting down, you know, and, you know, I think this is a very important fight for her. And she's currently on a two fight losing streak. Yeah. So, you know, you could be saying she's fighting for a promotional life here and she's fighting an Aussie in Australia. Will we go with the upset? Yeah. If we can't find that much tape on Clark. Yeah. She can't find that much on Clark either. So I'm going to go with the surprise here and I'm going to go with Jesse yes. Rose Clark to grab the opportunity to come in late to take it and get the victory. Interesting. Uh, your main event sees Fabrizio waste no time in my last bout, Verdum, <laughs> taking on Marcin uh, Tybura. Heavyweight division. <sighs> We spoke about this obviously when, when Fabricio fought Walt Harris, and it's no disrespect to Walt, um, kick people in the head during a break, Harris. Uh, but Verdicio, but there's levels, yeah. Has the levels been leveled a bit here for a better, more fair playing field? Mar Marson have more to offer Fabricio? I, th I think he'll have more to offer. He, he's good on the ground as well, so I don't think it's just a matter of Verdum getting it to the ground. Um, although I do think that should be the game plan for Verdum. Um, Tabora has some good hands uh, he, he has a lot of knockouts um, but he does like to do funny enough he likes to do a lot of his work on the ground he'll get mm. some, somebody to the ground 
he'll try pass guard and he'll try land shots and I think that could be a problem for yeah, him yeah I was going to say you going to do that against Verdun exactly I think that could be a problem for him and you could see in the last fight against Arlovsky he done well he got Arlovsky down a couple mm. of times and when he was on the ground he done really really well um, but Arlovsky did get back to his feet a couple of times um, and once he got back to his feet you could see Tybora was getting a little bit slower and slower and as the fight went on Arlovsky started getting into it and started landing mm. big shots um, Verdun at a certain point in his career he kind of fell in love with his striking. Mm-hmm. But I loved in his last fight against Walt Harris that he said, okay, Walt Harris, what I need to do against Walt Harris is I need to go in there, I need to get the takedown. He'd done it. He got the takedown and just finished it easy. And that's when we said levels. And I think against Tybor, it's going to be a similar situation where I don't think it's going to be as easy for Verdum. But I t- still think if it hits the ground and if Verdum can get it to the ground, which I think he can, there's going to be levels there as well. Um, and that's why I have to go over Verdum. Um, and even the striking, I think he can be... I don't know if he's probably the better striker. It's hard mm-hmm. to say. You know, it's difficult kind of to line two guys up when they haven't fought before. Um, but in the striking, he has very good Muay Thai. And I, I think people underestimate Verdun striking. Just because he's not the best striker in the division doesn't mean he's not a good striker. So I'm going to go with Verdun. I'm going to go with Verdun by a submission in, in probably the second round, third round-ish. I think what, what Verdun, he fell in love with the striking, but I think what Verdun is going to do a lot more, he's, he's going to utilise the striking to get the takedown. To sort of mix so. it up to say, look, I can do this, I can do this. But I honestly think if it hits the mat, it's like a Venus fly trap. You know that that fly lands, bang, yeah. Um, and it, like it, it, it's it's absolute. You look at like the Walt Harris, the armbar, just how he set it up, and he he, he was ch- he was chasing and he he was chasing the, the triangle, wasn't it? And he switched it to the yeah. just de- beautiful, just delicious, delicious. Yeah, delightful. Um, Jiu Jitsu, and, and again, yeah, I can't look past for doom here. I, I, you know, unless the shock knockout comes that Verdum does something silly and drops his hands and, and uh, you know, similar to what... Not that, you know, there's a big difference, I think, with the reigning champion, Sleep Amy Oches, but I just don't... I think Verdum has learned his lesson from that. Just hopefully he doesn't pull that stupid face all night. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking for Verdum here. It's so a big should... change for Tybora as well because Tybora was coming in thinking he was going to face Mark Hunt, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's been some time, so he's had time to change up what he's been working on. But it's, it's certainly a big switch. Like, oh. From Mark Hunt to Verdum, yeah. that's a, a complete 180. So um, it'd be interesting to see what he does. Well, essentially, what to do that is like, right, we're going running for 10K, grand. And then you're told, no, actually, we're going swimming. Yeah, pretty much. It's, pretty you know, much. It's, it's completely they different. both come from completely different disciplines. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that is UFC Fight Night 1 to 1. That's your main card. Yep, yeah, we said at the top, it mightn't be the best card there. But look, it's fights. They're on the telly. Do you know what I mean? Watch they're f- them. They're free if you're in a certain part of the world. Yeah. No, but look, there's loads of MMA. That's, this is the thing, Rob, we talked about. We're sort of saturated at the moment yeah, with pre- MMA. Yeah, we're very um, saturated. And well. cards have to falter. Well, not falter, but you know, the UFC roster is so big that these guys have got to fight. So you never know. These are the cards that you look at them and you go, ugh. And then come next week, we'll all be going, Jesus, yeah, what like, a fight. Yeah, there's a couple of good fights. Like I think the Mohammed and Tim Means fight could be a cracker. I think Jake yeah. Matthews against Bojan could be a great fight. Um... The Volkanovski and Shane Young fight. Don't know too much about Shane Young, as I said, but Volkanovski is a very exciting guy. And the main event is, is pretty decent, especially if, if, if it comes to a grappling exchange. You know, it's always exciting.